Welcome to the Sports Biz Show. Today we have with us Mr. W. V. Raman, who is a well-known personality in the world of cricket. Uh, as a former professional international cricketer himself, known as a left-handed batsman, he is now the coach of the Indian national women's cricket team. In his own unique style, he is also bringing novel stories to the forefront with his own podcast called Inside Out. But today we chatted with him on. the monumental rise of the indian women's cricket team the challenges the tribulations and the opportunities that that holds let's dive into it hello mr ramon welcome to the podcast how are you doing today i'm fine i'm trying to take things as they come and surviving trying to be safe and taking um, things day by day yeah uh, absolutely i understand um so the first question actually i was very intrigued to learn about was um, the fact that you started off as a cricketer yourself can you shed some light on how you switched to coaching and then worked your way to become the head coach of the indian women's cricket team Obviously, once you finished uh, with your playing days, uh, you try and see where is it that you can head and what is it that uh, really takes you. So, like everybody else, once I stopped playing, what I did was I tried various things. Uh, then eventually decided that um, uh, coaching uh, would be something of interest to me because one is that uh, it. Uh, gives you a satisfaction uh, if you see that you can be a positive influence on the lives of others and if you can also pass on the knowledge and um, the uh, expertise that you gained over a period of time um, that obviously was the main uh, driving force for me to get into coaching and uh, i quite enjoy it now no i'm sure the team is as lucky to have you um since you've coached the men's side as well with a couple of teams in the IPL what sort of differences do you see in the coaching style in the coaching style that you had to bring forth or are there any fundamental differences in coaching the two sides so well, as far as um, the IPL setup is concerned there is nothing much that to do in terms of coaching because uh, everybody assembles uh, perhaps a week or two before the tournament uh, but um, in terms of coaching a team uh, in the women's uh, category is something else because what happens is they are relatively inexperienced because they don't get to play as much of cricket in terms of years and also in terms of uh, the number of competitive uh, matches that they play let's say between the ages of 14 to 19 or 14 to 21 so the big difference lies in the fact that uh, the guys by the time they come to the india a level of the senior national team they played a lot of cricket they are hardened they are very experienced so uh, they know uh, quite a lot of things and uh, it's easy for them to understand as to what you are trying to communicate if you start at a certain level assuming that uh, they supposed to know all this because they have uh, reached the india a stage or the senior national side uh but in the case of uh, a lot of girls what happens is that uh, they don't uh, have the opportunity or they do not have a background of having played seven or eight years of competitive cricket and a lot of cricket uh to be as uh, hardened and well versed as the guys so you got to try and pipe down a little bit try and uh, ensure that um, they are first um, capable of understanding at the level at which you are talking to them Uh, and also try and see uh, what um, uh, suits each one of them in terms of um, how you communicate right but despite that despite not having that sort of grassroots feel for cricket for on the women side uh, since a lot of women cricketers of the country have mentioned that they grew up playing against the boys and in the boys clubs because of not having that competition um the team has still done extremely well uh so do you do you see that when you enter the position of head coach on the women's side did you want to inculcate uh, some changes in the coaching system or in the culture that can maybe uh get more refined athletes uh when they become elite athletes the fact that they have done well uh, despite the relative inexperience that i spoke to about uh, it's an indication of the diligence 
the attitude and the hard working nature of these girls. Uh, that's what has made them perform as well as they have done in the last five years or even prior to that, uh, sporadically, of course. Uh, but um, the fact remains that um, you need to try and uh, make them understand as to the kind of potential that they have because sometimes they need that reassurance, they need that confirmation uh, because um, when they are not playing on a regular basis over a period of time, they do have, tend to have some self-doubts. And uh, the thing about girls is that they've got to be told because they are not aware of their strengths in some cases. So you need to try and tell them uh, the kind of potential that they have and what is it that they can do with the inherent potential that they have and uh, try and help them to optimize their potential to achieve uh, great things uh, which is going to be in relation to the uh, talent that they have. That's a very valid point. Uh, we can often see that in, in the mindset difference, at least in the men's side, in sports and in the women's side. Um, do you see also enough equitable resources being directed now to women's sports, of women's cricket especially, after the rise of the team, uh, especially because of COVID since so many sporting calendars got halted and now we see the revival through the men's side, uh, but the women's side still has a long way to go in terms of the calendars being back. Uh, do you see enough equitable resources, infrastructure being dedicated now? Yeah, this has started to happen as far as Indian cricket is concerned when they came uh, under the fold of the BCCI way back in uh, perhaps around 2008 or 2009. Uh, there's a lot more uh, uh, encouragement being provided. There's a lot more systems come in. There's uh, a lot more development in terms of infrastructure. Uh, whatever was perhaps not happening, uh, let's say, until two, three years ago, has also been put in place in the last couple of years. Um, what has happened is that um, the Asian Cricket Council has started to uh, organize um, emerging uh, players tournament as they do for the boys. And uh, the ICC has also started an under-19 World Cup. Uh, apart from that, the BCC has also brought in the India A level. Uh, teams, uh, even uh, for the girls. Uh, it's more or less running uh, along the same lines as the basic infrastructure and the tournament uh, widespread that guys have. Except for the fact that the girls don't play the duration again because uh, in, <clears throat> in international cricket they don't play test cricket uh, due to various reasons. But otherwise uh, their structure is uh, along the same lines as the men's in uh, Indian cricket. Right. Um, also, India has this natural advantage of being one of the largest youth populations. And I think that is immersing on the sports side as well with uh, we see Shifali Verma, the 15-year-old prodigy, uh, making waves as well as uh, on the men's side as well, we can see the youth driving that change now. On the women's side though, what is the BCCI doing to make sure that talent uh, more Shifali Varmas are being inculcated and, and produced or nurtured? Uh, definitely what is happening now is that um, they're also trying to look at ways and means of overcoming the societal uh, changes, uh, societal pressures as well. Because uh, it's not easy for a girl to pursue cricket professionally. Uh, that used to be the norm, you know, a few years ago. And whoever played, um, I have to be really given a lot of credit and respect for a simple reason. Because women are expected to do uh, certain things uh, as a matter of norm in India. Uh, but uh, what is happening is that uh, with the tremendous performances put up by the girls uh, in recent times, and of course that being telecast now, uh, that is changing the viewpoint of a lot of parents. They feel that the girls... Uh, can also display their talent on an international platform. They can also make a career out of cricket. Uh, those um, challenges have been gradually uh, addressed and is getting minimized. Uh, but what lies ahead uh, is that um, uh, the girls also will have an IPL somewhere down the line. I can't tell you as to exactly when that will start. But once that starts, you should see um, uh, women's cricket skyrocketing like hell. Um, in India as well, like it happened uh, with the men's uh, cricket also. Because I remember around 2008 when the IPL came into being and once it became a hit, uh, you had uh, parents, you know, driving their boys 
I'll just pick up a bat and go and play cricket. Let's see, you know, if you can uh, make it into one of the IPL franchise sides so that you know, it's financially secure. So um, that changed the perception and also that provided uh, the uh, parents a uh, sort of uh, feeling that their boys could make a career out of cricket. And that is definitely going to happen uh, in the years to come. Um, the other fact uh, when it comes to the larger camp rights is that um, the ICC is also uh, are going to really drive women's cricket in the years to come. The start of the under 19 World Cup is obviously a big pointer towards that. Um, in fact, personally, I see um, women's cricket being the uh, medium for which a lot more countries can be easily brought under the international cricket playing umbrella mm. uh, because um, that has got a huge potential. So all in all, uh, things are really looking good for uh, women's cricket in general uh, and also especially for uh, women's cricket in India. Uh, that's great to hear. That was actually going to be my next question is what can we really expect from the commercial engagement side? Uh, thank you for touching upon that. But I also uh, want to ask you, do you see... Um, the fact that are we ready as a nation to adapt women's cricket as much as men's cricket, perhaps not at the same stature immediately, but over time, uh, since the adaptability to cricket has always been very high in the nation, but more so on the men's side. So from a commercial side, do you see enough media attention, enough sponsors being on board? It is definitely bound to happen because the following that is uh, there is only increasing with uh, each passing day you ask me because um, uh, there was a lot of viewership uh, when they recently played the uh, mini IPL sort of tournament, the Challengers uh, League. And as it is, there's a lot of people on the social media questioning as to uh, when uh, exactly the women are going to get back on the field. So the following is uh, uh, increasing multifold and there's no reason why it cannot have the same kind of following or the support in terms of um, sponsorship and also personal endorsements in the future. Even if you look at it now, um, the girls who have been around for a while, um, they definitely have a lot of uh, endorsements um, happening for them. And uh, this is uh, going to really get uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, but there again, the only challenge then would be for these girls to be able to handle all that. They need to learn to handle all that. Um, uh, by that, I mean um, not only the um, kind of um, explosive uh, following that they're likely to have, but they also need to understand or um, learn to handle both the commerce and yet continue performing out on the field. Right, absolutely. Uh, my last question is uh, usually a piece of advice I ask for um, aspiring professionals. Uh, I would like advice for two types of segments from you. One is, of course, young girls who are now aspiring to be professional cricketers in India. And uh, the second segment is professionals looking for a growth in women's cricket to contribute to the women's cricket side in India. On both sides of the spectrum, you must take up um, the stance that you're not uh, really driven by the financial benefits you're likely to get. Let it be for a budding cricketer, if you're passionate about the game and if you're really talented and if you enjoy playing that game, by all means go ahead because you'll be looked after, there are bright uh, prospects. Uh, in terms of uh, cricketers who finish their careers and are looking for um, uh, other pursuits or uh, other things that they can do in terms of keeping in touch with the game and also contributing to the game to which uh, they have devoted a lot of time in their lives. Uh, once again, don't be driven by the financial rewards. There will be a lot of opportunities because uh, once the IPL comes in, um, uh, there will be a lot of um, employment opportunities created, not only as coaches, but uh, in various roles. Um, so, uh, as I said earlier, it's important to understand that all the financial gains that they're going to gain is only be based on how good you are going to be in whatever role that is you are going to play. Let your ability, your performance, uh, in the case of um, aspiring players speak, and in terms of uh, the people looking for careers and getting into jobs post-cricket, 
let your work speak for you. You don't have to promote yourself um, through any other means. If you do whatever you are good at doing, and that will never ever be missed out. If you are doing a good job, it will be recognized. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. With that, it brings me to the end of my questions. Uh, thank you for answering everything um, so thoughtfully and sharing all your wonderful insights. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for having me and uh, wish you also the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share for the best tips and trends in the world of sports business wherever you listen to podcasts. Reach out over social media to connect or collaborate. Links will be in the bio. See you next time.